It is my great honor, and boy, I really mean that, to present the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences Hall of Fame Award to Gene Roddenberry, and accepting for his father is his son, Rod Roddenberry. I did not get my notes into the teleprompter on time, so I'm going by paper. But let me begin. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege to be here tonight to accept this induction on behalf of my father. The Academy recognizes individuals not just for what they've done, but even more so why they've done it. I know my father would be honored to be among the former inductees. Their contributions have helped shape the television industry. Sidney Kassid, founder of the Academy, saw television as a wonderful tool for education. He was passionate about utilizing it to bring informative programming to its viewers. In 1946, he set forth its mission statement to promote the cultural, educational, and research aim of television. Like Sidney Cassid, Gene Roddenberry saw television as a means to share perspectives and communicate ideas. During his high school career and college career, my father found himself at the top of his class. He was enthralled by human history. He excelled in debate class, and he felt fulfilled by poetry. Upon graduating college, he was pulled into World War II and became a bomber pilot. He flew a recorded 89 missions in the Pacific Theater. After, eight, after 1945, he became a commercial airline pilot, flying one of the longest and most treacherous passenger routes between New York and Calcutta. It was on one such flight that his plane suffered a catastrophic engine failure and crashed in the Syrian desert. As one of the only surviving crew officers, he helped rescue 20 others, but sadly, 14 lost their lives. After deciding to hang up his wings, he joined the LAPD. Los Angeles Police Department became a beat cop walking the streets of what's now Chinatown and Hollywood Boulevard. He befriended Police Chief William Parker, and began writing speeches on civil law and ethics for him. He also began submitting stories to the popular TV programs at that time. It was during this creative release that he refined his ability to infuse stories with philanthropic messages. My father was a man who had witnessed the ugliness of our species, but despite all that, he still saw the inherent goodness and beauty within all of us. He would spend the next 40 years as a writer and producer, bringing his life experiences and observations to TV audiences around the world. Now, it was in September 1966 that Star Trek first aired. It was what would finally put Gene Roddenberry on the so-called map. In it, he depicted a future where the human species had evolved into an all-inclusive world culture that believed in the quest for knowledge as its guiding principle. In that future, he proposed that humanity would not have merely set aside its differences, but rather would have earned, would have, excuse me, would have learned to embrace and find beauty in the diversity around it. Each episode had buried within it metaphors and subtexts that commented on the social climate of that era. It broke new ground in not just television, but it broke new ground in, in social perception. Content of this type was extremely usual and seen by many as merely fantasy. However, the disenfranchised and the youth of the 60s saw it as a glimmer of light in what seemed to be a dim future. It's been 44 years since its creation, and Star Trek Messages still continues to break through the fourth wall of entertainment. It has inspired generations of fans to not only believe in an optimistic future, but to work together to ensure we have one. Sitka Sid believed television was a tool that could help us shape our future. Well, then Gene Roddenberry used that tool to shape a future we should all be so lucky to live in. I stand before you tonight to accept this honor on behalf of my father, but also to say that Rod Gene Roddenberry lives on. Thanks to those who worked tirelessly to bring meaning to the Roddenberry name, thanks to the thousands of industry professionals, and to the talented team that recently reinterpreted Star Trek. That's J.J. Abrams, Bob Orsi, and Alex Kurtzman. And thanks to the million of fans who communicate, excuse me, who continue to enjoy and be influenced by my father's work. Gene Roddenberry truly lives on, and I'm proud tonight to announce one other way in which he's doing so. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Roddenberry Productions has teamed up with Imagine Entertainment to de develop a new TV series based on one of my father's most beloved concepts, The Quester Tapes. It is my hope that this joint venture will once again thrust television into new realms and inspire, inspire its viewers to believe in our species and our future. Thank you again to the Academy members without whom my father would not have been so honored in a special way. I hope that what I do in my lifetime honors him as much as you've honored him tonight. Thank you very much.